Electricity markets worldwide are undergoing a multi-decade transition in the way electricity is generated and consumed. How long will it take? How much will it cost? These will depend on both market rules and climate policy. In this paper, uh, we seek to model uh, the impact market rules and climate policy has in the, the speed and cost of the transition. In the old days, electricity was generated by uh, largely coal plants with some gas peakers to manage flexibility. <clears throat> that has changed enormously. Today, we're seeing rapid investment in renewable resources. And for example, here is uh, a large solar farm in central Texas. Uh, on the first slide, you saw uh, the largest battery in the world as of December 2017. Uh, it is no longer the largest battery. That was built in uh, South Australia and it took uh, just 90 days uh, to complete the build. <clears throat> Here in California, this is uh, my car, a 2020 Model S Tesla. It is fully autonomous with a software upgrade and it uh, has a range of 400 miles. It can charge about 200 miles of range with a supercharger in one hour. The goal of electricity markets is reliability at least cost. This objective can be broken into two components, short run efficiency and long run efficiency. Short run efficiency uh, means we're making the best use of the existing resources. Long run efficiency is the more difficult objective and that's uh, creating the right incentives for investment to get the right mix of resources. Over the last several decades, we've evolved to a point of where we have a successful market design. The cornerstone of the design is getting the prices right. Most importantly, in the spot market. This is done with a day head market, which is done to schedule resources throughout the day, uh, followed by a real time market uh, where we have bid based security strained economic dispatch. This accommodates the changes that inevitably occur as there's shocks to both supply and demand. The spot market is supported by forward trade, which enables parties to manage risk and it supports long run investment. Electricity market design matters. We just moved uh, to California. Alternatively, we could have moved to Texas. Had we moved to Texas, we would have picked the, the following plan, which is um, uh, $10 a month plus the wholesale cost, which averages about nine cents per kilowatt hour. This would be our plan in the Texas market. Instead, in California, we pay, uh, after looking at the plans, uh, we found our best plan, which is $16 a month, plus about 36 cents per kilowatt hour, 400% more than Texas. This cost difference is not because the wholesale cost is so much higher in California than it is in Texas. In both markets, it's around three cents per kilowatt hour plus the costs of transmission and distribution. Uh, so embedded in the California price is a lot of market design mistakes over uh, multiple decades. Climate policy matters. Uh, what we've seen so far, the world's been working on this for about 30 years. And over that period of 30 years, rather than have the decline in emissions from the energy sector, uh, the emissions have continually increased. This is not a sustainable path. We have to quickly start reducing our emissions and the most important and immediate uh, place where those reductions can come is in the electricity sector. Electricity is central to uh, decarbonization overall. For example, in transportation, uh, we cannot decarbonize without uh, 
uh, having the electricity be generated by renewables. When I look at the markets, this for example is the Texas market, ERCOT, and see what um, the plans are for investment, what we find is uh, it's good news. It's solar, wind, and storage for the most part, maybe a little bit of gas, but solar, wind, and storage dominate the investments. That's great. When I look across the United States, we get a similar picture, solar, wind, and uh, storage and a little bit of gas. Um, also uh, very good. When we look at retirements, uh, we have lots of retirements coming from coal and old gas plants. And that also is very good news. The bad news, however, is that this transition is coming slowly. Uh, we need more quicker uh, retirements of the fossil generating resources and quicker adoption of the renewable resources. Uh, only about, in the United States, about 4% of the resources are changing each year at the current rate. The also good news is that FERC, the regulator in the United States, uh, just had a technical conference on carbon pricing. Carbon pricing is uh, certainly the most effective uh, instrument that we have with which to induce the right incentives for both operation and for demand and for investment in new technologies and new resources. Um, at this conference, there was pretty much unanimous consent that carbon pricing was the way to go. Just a few weeks after this conference, FERC uh, made a, uh, a landmark action on carbon pricing, which allowed the states to adopt carbon pricing as part of their rates. So the question is, how does the transition depend on the market rules and policies? First, this is a long run question. So we need a long run model. Um, it's not a steady state question. We can't do a steady state long run analysis because we're interested in this transition, which is gonna take multiple decades, but nonetheless, the, the uh, structure of resources is gonna change dramatically over the next uh, decades and must change. So in order to model the investment decisions of the market participants, we have to model the energy market to figure out what the profits would be as a function of the climate policy and the market rules. The model uh, uh, models entry and exit on an annual basis. The investors are forward looking, uh, they're rational investors. They form expectation about uh, profits over the next 30 years and make investments when it's profitable, investments to enter and uh, decide to exit if it's unprofitable. Uh, our model uh, has, has found an equilibrium when the expectations of the investors are consistent with what actually happens. The way we model climate policy is the way investors do with the carbon price. So all the investors in energy resources, if you're deciding to spend a billion dollars on a plant, you care very much about what the carbon price is over the next 30 years. And embedded in their models is some sort of carbon price. We will explicitly, well, we will have an explicit carbon price path in our model. The model consists of four components. Uh, we forecast net load on a five minute basis over our modeling period, which includes uh, 40 years plus an additional 50 years to make sure that all the resources are looking far enough ahead and can enjoy the profits from their, the, the longer modeling period. Uh, net load is the uh, observed load, which is, of course is uncertain, um, minus the uh, renewable resources, solar and wind. And that is the load that has to be uh, satisfied 
by the rest of the market in order to have uh, reliable electricity. The second component in, is the energy market model, which calculates, um, given the net load, uh, the energy profits in a year, given um, a particular set of market rules, climate policy, and resource structure. Um, this is done on a five minute basis. And this is where the heavy lifting is in terms of computation. Um, so in, 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 in fact, we're modeling um, the largest electricity market in the world, PJM, on a five minute basis. And that requires um, uh, enormous computation, um, solving uh, the, the day head market uh, for every day and then the, um, the real time dispatch uh, on a five minute basis. So we can't do too many energy market runs. We do about 10,000. We can do about 1,000 a day on 22 high end servers in Finland. And the uh, the, the, uh, what this gives us is a rich data set, which we then can use to create a econometric model of the energy profits of the resources as a function of resource structure and all the other parameters. And that's done in the energy market proxy. Uh, and once we have that econometric model, then we can make uh, as many calls as we want, typically about 80 million calls uh, in order to get convergence of our model over the 40 year study period. And then finally, there's the capacity market model, which is um, the annual market where resources are making entry and exit decisions. And as I said, that's done every, um, uh, it's annual market and is um, every year is calling the energy market proxy in order to identify the rents very quickly for the, um, the resources. So who should exit and who should enter. Two new types of resources that are very important in our future world uh, that we have to model and are difficult to model are storage is the first Storage is what's going to give us the flexibility necessary to support the intermittent renewables. And this will largely be uh, batteries, but other storage technologies um, might appear as well. We model explicitly a, a full set of um, different battery technologies, different, uh, uh, of different uh, durations. And our approach is to uh, uh, model them both in the day ahead market and then in the real time dispatch. And this is very important in our model because a lot of the price formation is going to come from uh, storage. The renewable resources have zero marginal cost and so they cannot participate so directly in price formation. The second element that's very important to model is price responsive demand. Today, there's very little price responsive demand. Um, this is consumers uh, that are responding or industrial customers responding to price. Um, and uh, today there's very little of it, but in the future world, when consumers have electric vehicles, when they have smart home technology, smart thermostats and the like, then uh, they, we will see more uh, price responsive demand. So we explicitly model the price responsive demand. It grows over time as um, these technologies are adopted. So that brings us to, to, to the end, our, our quick summary of what the model does. Um, it, it is in short, a very powerful tool with which to study an electricity market such as PGM, but could be any electricity market in the world to understand the impact of market rules and climate policy on the pace of transition, market efficiency, the cost to load, and of course, reliability. So in this way, we can uh, identify uh, policies that are both effective 
and cost effective in um, supporting uh, our path, a sustainable path in the decades ahead. Thank you.